we find that Sri Ramakrishna is the Shiva manifested as light. Sri Ramakrishna is just Swami referred that the advent of Bhagavan Krishna Ramakrishna is a mother Chandra Devi was standing before the Shiva temple in the village and her husband was far away. I went to another temple for pilgrimage in the Vishnu temple Gayadham for the giving offering oblation to the uh, to poor fathers. And he there found that she father saw that his Narayana appearing before him and saying that I am pleased go oh, oh Shudiram I am pleased with your puja and worship. I want to be born in your home. And then father said I am a poor Brahmin you are the Lord of the universe, so how can I manage to maintain you? So please, please don't, don't come to my home. I will not be able to take care of you. But the Lord said, don't worry, I will take care of myself. So he forced himself. It is the Narayana aspect of him. And here we find that Holy Mother, the Chandra Devi, she was standing in front of the Shiva temple and suddenly she found something different. The, in the, this lingam, the Shiva Murti, suddenly become lighted and it become effulgent and radiant and the light filled the whole inner, inner temple and then light rushed towards him to the door and entered into her body and she felt that some, somebody has entered into her and she felt unconscious. We find that the same light, that light, which is the endless, beginningless light for the good of humanity, take the form that is in from, it is, that's why you call Lingo Udhama. It is arising out of birth, is becoming out of that Lingo light, light of Shiva. We find that there is much similarity. The Sri Ramakrishna was born three days after Shivaratri, a few minutes before sunrise. That means she was arrival, removes darkness and ignorance. We see that Sri Ramakrishna's arrival, removing the darkness and ignorance of the people of the world. Seeing the Sri Ramakrishna ignorant you know, incarnation, he only removed the ignorance which of lust, greed, pride, all these destroyed. So Sri Ramakrishna's connection with Lord Shiva, it is from the childhood itself. We find that she was born and the baby was but baby was missing. And then afterwards the mother found that that um, midwife, she found that she is found in the smear with the ashes. Shiva is always in the cremation ground, no? in, the, in the Lord Shiva's place is in the cremation ground. The cremation ground, why? Cremation ground means the life, this life, which is only a mixture of duality, to transcend that and to bring into that state of beyond duality, that is the state. That's why Shiva is an expression of tremendous renunciation, detachment, absolute connection with the truth and no connection with the world. That's why Shiva dances in the cremation realm. So Sri Ramakrishna was found surprisingly that when he was a young boy, he was first of all smeared with the ashes at the very birth. Shiva uses the ashes and then Shiva also uses the ashes, the smears in, her, in his body, that ashes. Why? Ashes means it, it is the expression of tremendous detachment, renunciation. The whole world is nothing but it's unreal. So unreal like that of the meaningless ashes. We pay so much value to the world. That is nothing wrong, but that 
giving too much value and forgetting our real nature, we suffer so much. So, real spirituality is that when one experiences that it is, this world is meaningless, but there is a truth, and that truth is the eternal truth of consciousness and bliss, which is Brahman. So, Sri Ramakrishna was born when he was mirrored with ashes. So she was nature. So we find that that Shiva who is all species is born in this way to remove the suffering and miseries of life. Shiva has two states. One state is the Swamadhi state. <coughs> Swamadhi state is transfixed in the great yoga. He is satisfied with it himself. Shiva is fully pleased. That's why you find that Shiva is in meditation pose. He does not care for anything but the transcendental. He is to himself. The truth which is within is absorbed in the truth. That is the Samadhi state. This is the Atma Rama state. Satisfied fully in his own self. And when he descends from that Samadhi state, we find that he gives a trace of ego. And then he dances and dances around and Shiva dances in two steps. It combines in a single image Shiva's role as creator, preserver and destroyer of the universe. When Shiva dances, it is it's coming out of Samadhi and coming with a little ego. In Hindu Trinity we call Creator, preserver, and such destroyer. Three aspects. Normally it is said Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. The three mythical concepts of God. But sometimes Shiva himself is considered as a creator, preserver, and destroyer. In the Shiva Purana, those who are Shiva worshippers, they look at that way. So the combination, it combines in a single image of Shiva, a role of creator, preserver, and destroyer of the universe. It conveys the Indian concept of never-ending cycle of time. It is in Indian concept of creation is not one-time creation. It is the cycle. Creation, preservation, destruction. And again, that is the starting point. Creation again starts from there and it rotates. That creation is cyclic or cyclic. If there is no end. That is one time creation and one time ending, there is no such thing, Hindu idea. So that's why Shiva gets merged into Samadhi and then comes out. When he wants to merge into Samadhi, everything closes into him. And then when he again wakes up with a little sense of ego, then he starts dancing in joy. His dance is dancing in joy. And in that dance, there are two types of dance. They're not that in the in the show show you see them. The Lord dances and dances illusory world of Maya to create that and maintain that and then destroy. This is just a fun. Sri Ramakrishna had one time a vision like that. Ramakrishna saw that you are standing on the bank of the river Ganga, and a divine motherly figure came. And she's so exquisitely beautiful and full of love and compassion. She gave birth to a baby, creation. She's the creator. She's the creator. No? Then nurse the baby with utmost love and attention. And lastly, she ran you know, so that same baby, she own body again. So it is creation, sustenance and destruction all happen in the will love work in Shakto devotees will say mother and Shoyva devotees will say Shiva sometimes Vishnu is worshippers they also include that the three aspects of creation sustenance destruction is done by Vishnu mm -hmm. but anyway so to naturalize the Shiva Lord then start dancing and they dance the what dance the illusory world of the Maya and he dances so that 
that Maya is created and from playful mood and then it is destroyed. In the Sri Vashiddhanta, Nataradu is described that Nataradu is Satchidananda Brahma. Resembling the Advaiting doctrine of abstract monism that Shiva stands for the Satchidananda Brahma and he manifests in a different way. Shiva, the divine cons cosmic dancer, is called Nataraja. Noto, <coughs> Noto is the, you can say that is called dancer. <laughs> Noto also means the actors. Dramatic art. So Shiva is a dancer, not ordinary dancer, but Nataraja. The dancer, cosmic dancer, the king of all dancers. And his dancing starts in two ways. One is called Ananda Tandava, another is Rudra Tandava. Violent, one is very soothing, soft, and loving, another is a violent dance to destruction. So, so, so Nataraja is called that he destroys all this drama of our life and takes back us to an eternal home of peace and absolute joy. And Sri Ramakrishna also saw that, that Shiva is releasing the soul from bondage. One day Sri Ramakrishna was in the Benaras in a boat and he saw in the cremation ground that Shiva is coming and giving the mantra and mother is untying the knots. The Shiva Shakti play is going on. So this is the Leela. This is a drama of life. And God comes again as Shiva to untie that knot of bondage. Sri, Ram, Sri Ramakrishna used to say that I, I take both the aspects. One is the Leela. Then we say play aspect, the world as you see it, is God's play going on. And he said, I also take the transcendental aspect. She was himself is but sometimes remaining in transcendental aspect in his deep samadhi. Sometimes he comes out and plays in this world of creation and creates and, and dances with the joy. It is all joy. It is all creation is all joy. But for us, because we forget Shiva, we forget our Shiva nature. That's why the world becomes so much full of struggle and turmoil and pain and suffering. But it is all the dance of joy. Two forms of dances, as I said, a gentle form is called Lasya, associated with the creation. And there is a Tandav, that's an Ananda Tandav. It is a dance of joy, of bliss. It's a vigorous form of dance associated with the destruction of the world view. World view, we the perspective and of lifestyle. So we have, he comes to destroy. And being in the play, we forget that we are playing. We forget our nature, no? When actors you do, in the, the real cinema world or movie world, no? Or in theatrical performance, you know? They are friends. And they make a plan that we'll have a fun. And we'll, we'll make, we'll act, we'll be taking part in different roles and we'll enact this. <coughs> There is no anger, there is no love, there is no hatred there. Just to solve for fun, for fun. But when they get into the roles, they will have to act according to the role. You are a holy man, you have to act like a holy man. You are a, you are a very angry guy, you have to show your anger in the play. Otherwise, there is no play. So, though it is all fun, but in the intense time of our playing, we forget who we are. We are all one. We are all full of bliss. We have no need for any suffering or pain. But in the acting time, someone is feeling the pain. Someone is being beaten. Someone is, is by beating someone. 
someone is killing someone with a gun, someone is falling down in the ground and hurting himself. This is all going on, forgetting. So there comes Shiva to dance, to awaken us back to our home. All these sufferings and pleasures and pain that comes in life, it is our Shiva's play. It takes us from again back to our home, understanding that this is a play, but real I stands behind. It is our Shiva nature. So, two types of dance. One dance is the dance, slow dance of creation. It is like, you know, the, think of the infinite ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean, just imagine. No ripple, no wave, perfectly calm and serene. Shiva in Samadhi state. Imagine that. And now he wants to dance. A little breeze, cool breeze blowing over the ocean. I shall be many. And that breeze creates ripples, waves, blow, billows, bubbles, foams, gradually, gradually created. And when this now is violent, when the destruction, that is the destruction as well, the um, thunder as. So it is called the Lasya, gentle form, when the Shiva creates this universe. And Tandava dance, Tandava of the Ananda Tandava, <laughs> the peaceful dance, the biggest form of dance associated with the destruction of what he destroys, destroys our world view. How we look at the world. We never see God in the world, but he's called playing with God. So that, to bring back that, it, it breaks our all association, attachments, our connection, our pride, our ego, mm -hmm. you know? So, and that is the Tandava dance. And you find in Siram, that is the Shiva's dance we know. That's where you find that he is encircled with the fire. Uh, in the Shiva dancing, sometimes we find your image that around him is a fire. That means that is untouched by any pollution. Now, Sri Ramakrishna, you find that Sri Ramakrishna dancing. In the gospel, you open the gospel. Anytime you open the gospel, you find that Sri Ramakrishna, you know, in ecstatic joy. Uh, some, some kirtan is going on, some mother song is going on, and he's dancing. And with that dance, is transporting all the people around and they are rising themselves into the level of higher consciousness. And he going to Samadhi and all the people, they are in the mood of tremendous connection with the Divine which is within. That is the purpose of changing the world view. She was dance. To change that this world is so real, the apparent play is so real. Shiva wants to have, make us aware. That is the destruction. It destroys our frenzy, destroys our relatives, life. To give us awake, to be awakened into the consciousness. No, 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 this is a play, this is fun. You are much beyond that. You are not limited with this. So that is the Shiva's role. And Sri Ramakrishna came in this age, we find in his life that he is every day creating that atmosphere in Dakshinashtan, uh, wherever he is going, and putting their mind in a level, all uplifted in a level, where there is they see joy, 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 nothing but joy. They forget their mind, <coughs> they forget their responsibilities, they forget their other and anxieties, worries, everything in presence of Sri Ramakrishna. That is the dance of Shiva in Ramakrishna form. So we find the dance, Sri Ramakrishna even scolding in, in the writer of the gospel. Uh, he is a, he was a professor that time and he is a respected person in old uh, old in consideration to the students, no? And there are in Ramakrishna's presence, there are all students. His students are also there as a devotee coming, not in Rakhal, etc., etc. 
like that age group, they were all young boys. So they came to Ramakrishna and Sri Ramakrishna is dancing and these boys are also dancing. But how a teacher uh, will be dancing with the students? So, so he is very shy. But Ramakrishna scolded him uh, that don't look at what people will tell you. Uh, that I am a teacher, I am a headmaster, I am a principal. Forget, give up all those. See, changing the worldview and asking him to join in the joy of, or, or the bliss of that dance of joy. So, transcending that, that the devotees used to live in a blissful mood, they forget their own worldly position in society. That is, even their rich people, their educated people, so, Sri Ramakrishna is taking the role of Shiva to destroy that attitude of ego. So, Shiva is a, the dance, is Tandava, as I just said, it is dance, vigorous dance of destruction. But that destruction is not destruction, it is actually compassion. It's a holiness. That's why Shiva is, Shiva is called all auspiciousness. Sri Ramakrishna manifested that Shiva nature in him. We find, as I said, that first point that Shiva was born, Ramakrishna was born with the Shiva nature. If he, Shiva lives in the creation realm. We find that in the early childhood of Sri Ramakrishna's life, when he was a young boy, he used to go away from home and then go to the cremation ground. A small boy going to a cremation ground is very unusual thing. But when he goes there and he's in deep in meditation, who taught him meditation? Wow, matters the truth. Shiva is always meditating. And he roams in the cremation ground. It is really astonishing near the village of, near the house of Ramakrishna. There are two big cremation grounds. And it was then wooded area, and normally any any you know those who are born in villages in Indian villages you can understand when you are young small child you know to go to some place where there is cremation ground we don't go alone where there are ghosts there are fear is there so I cannot go with some senior person we go but this boy runs away and his father his elder brother is searching for the Godai, the young boy, Ramakrishna's earlier childhood, then Godai. And he's shouting and asking for Godai, Godai, Godai. And Godai is responding, I am here. And they found that, don't come here, there are ghosts and others, <laughs> don't come here. So it is a, it's a surprising. And he used to go to, the many sadhus used to come near the house of Sri Ramakrishna's house in Kamarpukur because that was the path to go to Puri Jagannath. That was the end route. So we, they used to, sadhus used to come and they used to smear some ashes in their body. Ramakrishna will also go and then join with them. We, we got afraid because sadhus, when they sadhus, you have no idea about that. When we are small boys, a sadhu coming big, heavy, a long, tall body with a trident in the hand, smearing masses, wearing some copy normal like that. And seeing that, children should get frightened. But Ramakrishna make friendship with them. He used to go and live with the sadhus. And the smearing the asses like them, he used to be joining them. And he used to bring some water for or some firewood for them to help them to stay one night there, like the roadside inn. So, we find that that same tendency of absorption, of getting out of the worldview, is the same in Shiva, is Ramakrishna, from the very birth, wearing this mess. We find that he was so natural in this mood of Shiva nature, that when there is a village story, that there was one day, there is a Shiva night, which is coming soon, Every month, every year we have a Shiva's day that is coming 
uh, which day I forgot in this month, next week, next Saturday probably, Shivaratri. And Indian style is that they all take the name of Lord Shiva and live the whole night awake. You will, you will have to be, not don't sleep. You have to be fasting all day. Shiva devotees needs austerity. So Shiva, you want to love Shiva, then you have to be austere. So don't eat anything, whole day fast. And then whole night don't sleep. Take the name of Shiva. So that is the Shiva night and story. But in this, how everyone, all will be chanting the name of Lord, no, no, Shiva, no, Shiva, how long will you do? So they used to have some theatrical performances, open stage theatre. So then one will be playing the role of Shiva, another will be Mother Uma, uh, and on the, also all those tales and stories around Shiva's life that will be depicted. And that was decided in the village. And it was announced, so many people came to watch that Shiva play. But the boy or the man who was to play the role of Shiva, he actually fell sick. So everything is lost as it were. They found that is, there is this Godai, this Ramakrishna young boy, he looks like Shiva. <laughs> so we can grab him. So he is a playful boy. He said, yes, I will go. So he came and then he was dressed like a Shiva. Mm -hmm. The snake and snake in the head, trying to make his body, smearing the ashes like that. And as soon as he entered into the stage, everyone applauded with joy. Oh, Shiva, 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 Shiva. Uh, and hearing that Shiva name, he went into ecstasy and he fell down. <laughs> so again, the whole joy went into uh, sadness because he could not play anymore and he went into that unconscious state. He said, stayed that night and at least two days he was in that intoxicated field of Shiva. So, that is, we find that it is inherent in its very nature, that Shiva nature. Uh, is even the name of Shiva, little hearing that name of Shiva. And he looked and everyone is uh, praising him as if how beautifully he has fitted into the into the role of Shiva. But before he uttered any word, and all this Shiva, 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 and that took his mind into the Samadhi state, and he lost. We know now Samadhi, but people, village people thought that, oh, oh he is possessed with ghost. But what ghost now? It is Shiva ghost. So anyhow, he remained in that consciousness. So this is the <coughs> Ramakrishna, his life, matches with Sri Rama, Shiva, Shiva nature. There is story in that uh, Ramakrishna's life that Ramakrishna is in Dakshinishtar and he is embodiment of all different spiritual ideas. Shiva, Ganesha, your Vishnu, Narayana, Krishna, so all different aspects. So one day he was very much absorbed in Shiva concept. So he was in the Dakshinesha, there is a 12 temple, there are 12 Shiva temples. 12 Jyotirlinga are there. In the whole of uh, India, it is considered the Jyotirlinga means they are not established by any human being, but they are existing, ever existing by its own nature. Like that, it is that endless, beginningless Shiva Linga. So, in the name of them, there is one Jyoti Ling, Jyoti, another Shiva um, Murti, uh, the sign of Shiva. And then Sri Ramakrishna went there, and there is a praise of Shiva, um, Shiva Mahimna Stotra. There is a praise, oh Lord Shiva, you are so great. I have no language to describe you. You are greater than that of any description. You are that even Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, if she wants to write your glory for infinite time, period of time, 
or it will not be able to complete that. Or she told that there is a Sanskrit, beautiful Sanskrit verse. <coughs> but Sri Krishna Sri Ramakrishna chanted, and chanting that, he went into the ecstasy. And when he went to the ecstasy, he was holding the Lord Shiva, and he sat on the Lord Shiva. And naturally, all the priests, right, they came and they shouted against him. What nonsense that he is riding on the Shiva. Uh, Shiva Lingam will touch and tell him. And he is sitting over it. But he is not there. He's in the, he got the Shiva mood. So he has lost his outer consciousness. Then the landlord Mathur, he came and he saw and hearing the noise, he dispersed the crowd and Sri came back from consciousness after a long time. So we find in his life a different time, this type of experience that he is united and identified with the Shiva nature manifested. One day he was walking in the northeast Baranda, where Ramakrishna stayed in Dakshineshwar. He was moving back and forth, and this Mathur, he was a very rational person. He is educated in the Western uh, line of thinking. And he does not care for your vision or experiences like that. He used to say, these are all hallucinations of your mind. No. So he suddenly saw that Ramakrishna is moving one side, it is no Ramakrishna, it is Lord Shiva with a trident in hand and coming back on the other side, it is Mother Kali. And he could not believe that, he watched once and he rubbed his eyes and so the second time Ramakrishna was walking, again Lord Shiva was walking and coming back this way, it is a long stretch like this, bigger than this hall. So he was moving back and forth, and three times this Mathur is the landlord, very powerful landlord, and who established he, his, uh, his mother in law established that Dakshineshwar temple. So when he, third time he saw, he could not contain himself. He ran to Sri Ramakrishna and asked, Tell me, please, who are you? And as is Sri Ramakrishna, he said, how, with the humility, he said, oh, why are you bothering me? I do not know anything. I am a very <coughs> guy. Okay, okay, don't do like that. People will, how people will think that you are a respected person and you are falling at my feet. Get up, get up, get up. And that way he uh, escaped himself. But the point is that it is Sri Ramakrishna manifested in his nature the, what you call the, the Shiva nature. Shiva is called Nilakantha. There is a story, because it's a mythical god, so so many stories are there. There was one, one say, the churning, churning of the ocean was held. The gods and demons they were in trying to get the nectar, but nectar will come out of the churning charting of the ocean. So when the charting was going on, one side of the gods on one side the rope is the uh, is snake and one side they are charting this way and another side the demons are char pulling it. So charting going on and ultimately nectar came. Everyone is running for nectar. All the gods and all the demons they are fighting for that. But there came also the poison. Who will take that poison? Then they all, everyone is trying to run away from that poison. Then the gods pray to Lord Shiva, you are the only person who can help us. So please, please drink this poison. So he drank that poison and he hold it, held it here. He has the power to hold the poison not to go down. So that's why it's called Kantra, the throat. Blue throat. Shiva has a blue throat. <laughs> Ramakrishna, in this modern age, he didn't drink that poison that way. But poison is what? Poison is our <laughs> negativity. Poison is our pride, ego, all these things. So it is said 
Ramakrishna suffered, we all know, suffered out of cancer. <laughs> and what is the cause of cancer? He took the, all the sins, all the misconducts and things. <laughs> from whom? From Girish and other devotees who used to come to him. Taking their karma. That is the bad karma. Karma has two sides. One is good, another bad. So what do we, when you want to give it to God, what do you give? We want to keep good for us, no? And God can take care of our bad. So similarly, those who ever came to Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna take away their karma and they freed them from the karma, bondage of cycle of karma. And what happened to them? They became free. But this karma will act in someone, no? If I do something bad, I have to suffer. I make a loan, I have to pay. But someone pays for me. This is his account. I am free. So in spiritual life also, that is true. When great souls like Rama, Krishna, Buddha, they come, they give the great benefit of so they give, give the great benefit of our freedom. Our karma is taken away. So to, to that person who loses his karma, he is free. But who has to suffer some in this Suffering should go to someone. The God, like people like Ramakrishna and others, it is like Shiva. Shiva volunteered. When they approached, he volunteered it too. Who is ready to take my karma, my bad karma? But it is Sri Ramakrishna took that karma and he suffered out of cancer. And But we can see his Shiva being in that cancer, being in that excruciating pain, he is fully, he is fully established in his eternal joy, and and kept everyone joyful. You read the la last part of Sri Ramakrishna's passing away, you will find that Sri Ramakrishna is keeping everyone cheerful, joyful, even being in that utmost condition of the cancerous death. In those days, there was no treatment, so he passed away smilingly, taking the sins of others. Sorry, we can understand. Mm. So that I can, uh, I am, I'll be born again and again eh, to remove the miseries of the world. Uh, I'll be, I, uh, it is my, I'll be born again and again to remove the sufferings of others. Buddha, what is Buddha's plan? Eh, Bodhisattva state, they attain to that state. Buddha comes again and again to redeem the sufferings of others. That is the Shiva nature which works with them. So we find that not, that Shiva is in our heart, Shiva is all auspiciousness, Shiva is all purity, Shiva is all love. And Shiva brings in our life sometimes some misery, as we, as from our perspective it is misery. But it is for removing our ignorance and taking away our bad Karmas. We find that Sri Shiva never cared for his own glorification. So Shiva is called Ashutosha. That's a beautiful word. Ashutosha. Shiva is another name. Ashu means quick. Tosha means pleased. You can please Shiva very quickly by simply putting some water and some belly and say, Oh no, Shiva. No? And he'll think, Oh, he's my great devotee, so I should have to relieve him from his bondage. No? Ashutosha. So, so we find Sri Ramakrishna's nature was Ashutosha. He said that if anyone calls upon me and move towards me one step, I shall move ten steps towards him. 
Ashutosha. Only one is trying to make one step towards God. He says, I will come ten steps close to that person. That means it is only our little attempt is necessary. In Shiva Puja, that's why it is called Shiva Puja. Whole night people do that puja. What they do? They pour water and little building and say, Om Namah Shivaya. And say, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. I salute Om Shiva, Om Shiva, I salute you, salute you, salute you. And bus. And they get freedom from all bondage. So, Sri Ramakrishna character is also with to this type of same type of feeling of freedom, bringing freedom for all. So the main thing is that we are frightened with Shiva's dance sometimes, but Shiva's dance is for not for destruction, but for their <coughs> helping us to return back to our home. Our life in this world is though full of suffering, but we all sometimes think happy days are happy days, happy days are good days. Happy days are not good days. Because those are the days mostly we forget God. When something <coughs> does not does happen, when it is not proper, or I didn't like it, they will call upon God. So the Shiva's the Tandavu dance, as I talked about, the destruction dance is not. The whole world is rhythmic, you know. Shiva dance, you can look at that. As I said, the pool top of the Pacific Ocean, Shiva is in that meditative mood. When the ripple comes, it is a distraction is coming. But that's a great starting point of this creation and creation should be joyful, cheerful and we being created into that we forget that our identity and then we turn towards the creation and if we give our total attention and we get involved into it and involved into only one part of life life is not one part both opposites are there life means good and bad happiness and misery you cannot take one part and another part out. Therefore, go beyond. That's why Vedanta teaches us that to go beyond happiness and misery. We have to go beyond all duality. <coughs> I and you and many and many. So it is that Shiva helps us to transcend our limited existence in this world. Uh, to take us beyond the suffering and pleasure and pain and to be established in the absolute peaceful state, what is called Samadhi. So this is the sadhana we should have to take in the Shiva Puja, that where to, Shiva is our very nature, inner nature, purity, consciousness, blissfulness, the compassion, uh, sacrifice. Shiva is an example of sacrifice. Sacrifice everything for others, others, others. Uh, and to serve everyone with that Shiva idea that everywhere is Shiva. Shiva is everywhere. And the whole world is dancing on Shiva. See, on the, so all the stars and galaxies and all the constellations, the dance is there. Huh? In the subatomic particle you go, the dance is there. It's all Shiva dancing. Uh, so, and Shiva is represented in the world by Om, like that. Oh, people sometimes the absolute aspect is Shankaracharya just composed many verses on Shiva where he has imposed it as the non dual absolute Satchidananda is Shiva. And Rao Krishna is also that. So that, that Shiva nature manifested in Rao Krishna. In the modern age, we don't have much uh, knowledge about the uh, what you call, mythical Shiva, but we are have. Historical Ramakrishna, we have our knowledge. If we read that, we can find that same Shiva character. And our life's goal should be to be like Shiva. So we pray that our life becomes charged with the spirit of Shiva and all auspiciousness come in our life, all types of suffering and misery, we can see the Shiva's kind hand 
in the glory, in the good days, there is Shiva there. In bad days also, there is Shiva there. Shiva is awakening the consciousness. When you are giving, forgetting him, that time, maybe little pleasure, maybe little ha happiness. But when he plays in a different role, and then we get awakened into our consciousness. We are born here for a different purpose, to see the Shiva play everywhere, to see Shiva everywhere. Okay? Swami Vivekananda says, he who sees Shiva in the temple, right, his practice is limited. But he, he who can see Shiva in everyone, living embodiment of Shiva in everyone, that is his puja is the best puja. So our puja will be best, worship will be best if we can see Shiva in everyone. Through happiness and also in our own personal life. When misery comes and pleasure comes, we should have to think it is Shiva's dance going on. Shiva's play is going on. And it is for our realization of our inner personality, inner divinity. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, we'll have a Q&A in the library. Mm -hmm. So you're all welcome to um, sit in the library, Maharaj. Next Sunday, we will have Swami Vedarupananda on the topic. I have to look it up because I knew um, the topic is quite interesting. The, the knife, the fork, and the spoon <laughs> of Karma Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. So, the night before the spoon of Karma Yoga next Sunday in the 11 a.m. in the Ramakrishna Monastery. On Wednesday, we have a scripture classes at 7.30 p.m. At 6 p.m., though, you are welcome to join us in the shrine for arati and meditation. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, Shivarati. Shivarati is... Uh, Which is day? Yeah. Saturday, Saturday. It's, yes, this Saturday. but it's in... While you do, do the Sivarashtri, we start around our evening puja at 6 o'clock, 6 to 8, first watch, half an hour gap, then 8, 8.30 to 1 hour, 9.30, second, 1 hour, 1 hour next. So we finish around by midnight. Yeah, it's an opportunity for introspection. It's a very important night. Meditation, introspection. So you are welcome. You can, you guys can join. Hollywood on that day. Or on Zoom, you can see on Zoom. <laughs> okay, so I thank you so much. Now Maharaj will close with the chant and then we will give him a few seconds so that he can reach the power and teach you all. Thank you. So I will end with a prayer for our Sri Ramakrishna's prayer. Om Nityam Samadhi Shukam Nijabhuta Rupam Ashwadayam tabupadi sharanagatam stu Anandayam prasamayam dupatishta setvam Sri Ramakrishna Bhagavan tabasutravatam Sri Krita Papa Makilam sharanagatavijat Ajivanan Bahukritam daya sadehe Tajjata keda nivaham sahases manata Sri Ramakrishna Bhagavan Tavashuk Prabhatam. O Ramakrishna, you continuously experience the bliss of Samadhi to self knowledge and dwell here, granting joy and peace to those who have taken refuge at your feet. O Ramakrishna, your glorious morning has arrived. You bear the physical pain resulting. From compassionately taking upon yourself the bad karma done throughout their lives by those who have taken refuge in you. O Ram Krishna, your glorious morning has arrived and we salute you again and again. Oh, peace, peace, peace. <laughs>